Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Beaver Creek City Council. Before we get started this evening, we have a very special presentation to make this morning, this evening. And so, you can, may be able to see the sign. Is it in the, uh, in the, in the picture or not? But it, uh, we've got an addition, and it's the girls' cross-country team. So, Coach, would you come up here for a minute, please? <laughs> Coach, I'm going to ask you to invite your girls up and introduce them for us, please. Okay, I, I can do that. We had uh, four seniors. All of them actually are getting Division One scholarships to run in college, so it's kind of really cool. I'll introduce uh, the state champion, also second in the nation, and was named the Gatorade Ath Ohio Runner of the Year just today. Uh, Taylor Ewer, come on up, please. <laughs> Second in the states, uh, also all Ohio, going to be running at the University of Syracuse. Uh, senior, that would be Savannah Rourke. Yeah. Um, next up would be uh, another all-state, uh, seventh in the state of Ohio, uh, going to be running at the University of Cincinnati, Jody Pierce. And my uh, fourth senior that will be running at UNC Wilmington, uh, senior Kendall Hops. Uh, then we had junior who was also All-State, ninth in the state of Ohio, that would be Julianne Williams. And now we get to our young babies, our sophomores oh, and freshmen. Wow. Uh, we have our uh, sophomore, Grace Daly. We have sophomore, Samantha Thomas. We have sophomore, Megan Now. And our one lone freshman, uh, Miss Jamie Comfort. Uh, the, the ladies had a great season. Uh, we were basically undefeated in the state of Ohio. We were ranked number one from day one, really, till the end. Um, we had the fastest, so we score in cross country top five runners. Our top five average was 1803, which is the fastest ever in the state of Ohio. We put four girls in the top 10 at the state meet, which has never been done. Uh, in Division one girls in the state of Ohio, and we won the state championship by over 70 points. Uh, we also ran at Nike Regionals qualifying for Nike Nationals, which would be only the fifth girls team from the state of Ohio to ever do that, uh, placing 13th in the nation, despite having one of our girls qualifying, Julianne Williams, who ran the meet, uh, ran it on a broken foot. She uh, ran it. At Regionals, she was not able to run Nationals, which hurt our score a little bit, but just to, to qualify for Nationals and really represent uh, the city of Beaver Creek and our school district. Um, the real cool thing about these ladies, uh, academically, I think our cumulative is over four point. Um, but the real magic really happens every single day at practice. And the cool thing about the street sign is we run all over the city. So every time I tell the girls <laughs> when they run by the signs and they see that, it really motivates us to try to get that. Because we had to go, we went from cross country to X country. Hopefully we'll have to make it XC because we'll keep the numbers moving. But it really is an honor to be with this group of girls, with so many seniors. Um, they really just needed me to be the cheerleader because they knew what it took after what happened last year and really just represent our city and our school district with great pride. So you can be really proud. Um, and as I said, the really magic happens every single day of practice. To do what they did is amazing. So it's an honor to represent our city. Wow. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. Wow. Anybody have something to say on council? Uh, sure. I mean, it's an honor for you to represent your city. It's an honor to be standing up here with all of you young ladies. You've done such an amazing job. I mean, you just booked not just 18, but this year as well. That's an incredible accomplishment. Ryan and I were looking at some of the years. We have some older championships on here, but you guys have done such a great job the past few years, and I couldn't be more proud to stand up here with you. Congratulations to our seniors. You guys have done such a great job. My one lone freshman. We expect great things from you. <laughs> I know you're going to do well, so welcome to the team. I think you guys have done such a great job, and we're so honored to have you here tonight. So thank you again all for coming. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Very well said. Anyone else? No, we're not finished oh, yet. Oh, we're not done. We're not finished yet. We're all done. Nice. Anybody?
Well, ladies, thank you for what you do. I mean, it just makes, this is the type of thing that makes it a pleasure to be and live in Beaver Creek. I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm almost speechless. I don't know how the coach did it. He just rambled on and he knows what he's doing. <laughs> but we do have, you do have your own individual oh. billboard. There you go. So we want to give one of those to each of you. And if you could start on that end, I know we'd all love to shake your hand. So if you can just come down the row, please. And uh, 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 Vice Mayor will issue you a proclamation. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I want you to stay right here. Oh, I will. I want to shake a couple hands up first. Congratulations, Coach. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I will stay here, buddy. Congratulations, Thank dear. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Best wishes. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Best wishes to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Can I get a couple of All right. Well, ladies, you already know, and I know you're very proud of your coach. But we have a letter here that on behalf of council we would like to give to your coach. And uh, for those that don't know, well, I'm going to read it. We would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you as being named the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association High School Girls Cross Country Coach of the Year in Ohio. Wow. Now that wow. is a... Your passion to encourage, organize, and lead your student athletes is deserving of much praise. We would like to wish you, Coach Russ, and the girls cross country team the best as you continue to demonstrate excellence on the playing field and way beyond. So, Coach, I'd like to present this to you. Thank you so much. On behalf of the entire city. Council. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> so, thank you all very much. Ladies, uh, they represent our city very well at athletically, but more importantly, they do it academically. And I'm just really proud to be a part of the system and really proud to be a uh, part of the uh, city of Beaver Creek. So thank you guys for all your support. Man. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, girl. Yeah. Sure. Take your time, Mary. Get you some photos. And he gets to take the sign with And I will take the sign with you. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Just a second to clear out. <laughs> hmm? No, yeah. Yeah. That, that's something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on with the regular planned meeting. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Bales? Here. Councilmember Curran? Here. Councilmember Garcia? 
Here. Councilmember Rushing. Here. Vice Mayor Adams. Here. Mayor Stone. Here. And if you would all join me for the pledge and a moment of silence, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure most of you already know, but in this moment of silence, we need to remember a, a friend, a colleague, as uh, we have lost our city planning and development director. The, uh, some of you may have read that we were also named uh, number 10 in the state of Ohio as far as a place to, to live and raise a family. Well, part of that is because of J Mr. Jeff McGrath. He was dedicated to making sure that our city moved in a direction that he thought was good for the community. So just a moment of silence, please. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we have an agenda before us. Any changes? Seeing none, I move to approve the agenda as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance resolutions and PUDs. Ordinance is 20-10. This is a second reading of an ordinance amending the zoning map by rezoning approximately 6.29 acres of land described as Book 6, page 6, parcel 22, on the, from the I-1 Light Industrial to OPR-1 Office Research Park. Thank you. Uh, this is the second reading of this ordinance, so this is a public hearing. Is there anyone present that would like to address council on this application? Seeing no one, this will uh, move on to the third reading. Thank you. No? Second reading. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We changed that. Didn't we? Okay. So, this is the second reading, and it's sponsored by uh, Councilmember Rushing. Sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve Ordinance 20 1. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 20-01. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is resolution 20-03. This is a resolution declaring the necessity of the construction and improvement of certain roadways in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio, related to the project known as Cedar Brook Flower Farm. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, uh, last fall, the city received a uh, petition from the developer of the Cedarbrook Flower, Flower Farms development requesting that the uh, cost of improvements along their frontage on Shakertown Road be paid for via special assessment. Um, in order to uh, proceed with the special, setting up the special <coughs> assessment, there's two pieces of legislation that are needed. Uh, the ordinance, uh, or the resolution rather, before you now, and the next item on the agenda, the, the ordinance to, to proceed. Mm -hmm. Uh, essentially, the, uh, the improvements consist of um, the construction of curb, uh, side path, and drainage, and minor widening uh, along that, that section of Shaker Town Road along their frontage. And what we're looking at doing is uh, combining this assessment project with the larger project we have planned along Shaker Town Road. Uh, because the bigger the project, a lot of times, the lower the unit cost, so it will save everybody money in doing that manner. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, constructing these improvements in 2022. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Are there any questions? Just for the uh, broadcast, this the assessment, when it's assessed like this, it doesn't cost the taxpayer a penny Correct. on an assessment. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any discussion? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 20-03. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next is Ordinance 20-02. This is the first reading of an ordinance to proceed with the design, construction, installation, and inspection of roadway improvements in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio, and related to the project known as Cedar Brook Flower Farm. Yes, as I said, this is the second piece of legislation relates to the resolution you just approved. Okay, thank you. 
All right, this is an ordinance, so is there anyone here this evening that would like to address council on this application? Seeing none, we will move forward. Is, uh, do I, any discussion? Is there a motion to move it to the second reading? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to move ordinance 20-02 on to the second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign, motion carries. Next is ordinance 20-03. This is the first reading of an ordinance to levy a municipal motor vehicle license fee pursuant to section 4504.173 of the Ohio Revised Code as authorized by House Bill 62 and amending the codified ordinance of the City of Beaver Creek, Ohio by adding new section 35.54 license tax for operation of motor vehicles to chapter 35 finance and taxation. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Good evening. Mayor, members of uh, City Council. Uh, we discussed this at the uh, previous work session, but just to give you a recap, uh, as uh, Diane mentioned, uh, this was passed as part of uh, House Bill 62 uh, that uh, provided the Ohio transportation budget for the two year, the biannual, biannual budget that uh, they generate. And within that bill was a provision that allowed uh, municipalities to uh, levy a $5 permissive tax on the registration motor vehicles. Uh, this tax, if uh, implemented, would uh, fund, it uh, would come directly to the city, 100% of it would be funded and come to the city for uh, that tax, and uh, the funds have to be used for um, authorized purposes, including the construction, maintenance, and repair of public streets. Uh, the fee will be collected every time we uh, have a uh, annual uh, registration for any vehicle within the city of Beaver Creek and uh, if uh, this uh, ordinance is passed it will be implemented uh, January 1st of 2021. Just to give you a, a brief history, uh, we do have the right now the county and the city collect uh, $20 worth of uh, the uh, permissive tax. $5 of that goes directly to the city the county has uh, the three other ones, the one they share with the city with 50% uh, coming to us. There's another one that the uh, county has that, in essence, we uh, have to request, uh, basically show the jobs that we've completed in order to get some of that uh, funding from the county. And then the other one is strictly a uh, county tax. The initial one that we have in the city, the $5 one that comes directly to us, was passed in uh, 1987. So again, we haven't seen an uh, increase in the uh, permissive registration fees for that long, and the uh, county uh, registration fees were all developed between uh, 86 and 91. So again, this particular uh, tax and this provision to uh, impose this tax hasn't really been adjusted or we haven't had the opportunity to implement another tax since that time. Obviously, during that time, we've used uh, their funds, the state funds, for uh, the repairs and constructions of the city streets, and we believe that this opportunity uh, gives us a uh, avenue to uh, generate a little bit more uh, additional revenue. We're expecting it to be about two hundred thousand dollars to assist us in our street programs. That uh, uh, again, even though we're trying to uh, catch up on the uh, street uh, infrastructure, this will go a long way into again helping that process. So. Uh, we would uh, recommend uh, implementation of that as part of our, uh, again, short-term and long-term strategy of looking for alternative revenue sources for the city in order to maintain our uh, infrastructure properly. So this uh, House bill that was passed gave us the opportunity to do that, and we'd like to avail ourselves to that uh, opportunity. So, All right. Thank you. All right. Is there uh, – this is the – an ordinance. So this is the first reading. Do, is there any public input on this ordinance? Seeing none, is there any discussion? Any questions? Comments? I think it's badly needed. Uh, Your Honor, we're always constantly challenged with the needs of road improvement and uh, keeping neighborhoods looking nice. And uh, I think this is just an additional tool for us to, to try to make up for a lot of areas that uh, really need it. I have uh, no questions, but I did want to make a comment that I appreciate you looking into alternative revenue sources because I think it's important to keep our infrastructure like uh, 
Chuck said up to date, and um, I appreciate it, Bill. No problem. Anyone else? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to move ordinance 20-03 on to the second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next is resolution 20-04. This is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with YOLO Development 1 LLC for the design and construction of a new traffic signal at the intersection of North Fairfield Road and Rock Drive. Uh, good evening again. Good evening. As part of the approval for the uh, medical office facility currently under construction at the intersection of North Fairfield and Rock Drive, uh, there was a uh, traffic signal approved uh, given that certain conditions are first met. Uh, the biggest of those conditions is that the driveway to St. Luke's must be relocated before that signal can, can be constructed. Uh, this proposed agreement doesn't change any of those terms or, or previous approvals. Uh, the only thing it does is the uh, developer approached us about this and given that they don't build a lot of traffic signals and the city does and we're going to take possession of this signal once it's built. Uh, both parties thought it was a better idea for the city to administer the design and construction of it uh, where all the costs are still being paid by the developer. The only difference is we're going to be running a public contract and using our inspection to, to run the project. So, okay. And with that, I'd ask um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them um, about the agreement. And, um, and for what it's worth is we're, we're pretty much ready to go on this once this is approved by council and the city manager. Um, we have a designer lined up and ready to hit the ground running with us. We're going to do both sides, the St. Luke side as well as the uh, the new development side. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the design and, and the, the signal will, will serve both mm -hmm. the St. Luke side and the Rock Drive side. And, and again, we, we won't um, uh, the city manager won't uh, sign the contract until we get assurances that everything is is worked out between St. Luke's and the developer as far as that driveway uh, moving. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, I'm just really excited to see this go in. I know I've had a lot of questions about this, and I know St. Luke's Driveway is, um, can be very popular at certain times of the day. Um, again, that is the church that I go to, so I know trying to Absolutely. get in and out of there sometimes is difficult. I think the addition across the street is great, so I've been really looking forward to seeing these plans, and I, I thank you for bringing this forward. So I have nothing else. And I'd actually like to make the motion if there's no other discussion. I have one question. Please. Sure, um, please. Uh, will that traffic signal be coordinated with the others along North Fairfield Road? It certainly will. We actually have um, a coordinated system that runs between Lance and, and Jonathan along North Fairfield Road. Uh, we have fiber optic cable connecting all these together. One of the provisions when we design this will be to connect to that fiber optic system and to work out coordination timings. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Please. Mayor, I'd move to approve resolution 20-04. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 20-04. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion <coughs> carries. Decision items. Council appointments to local agencies. Uh, annually, we uh, appoint, uh, or every two years, I think, actually, we appoint uh, council members to... Uh, fill slots on uh, various boards and commissions around the area. So uh, we've got a current partial list. Is there anyone that wants to fill in any of these blanks? We do have uh, Council Member Garcia is going to be the backup the secondary for the Beaver Creek Youth Development Committee. And so that leaves a couple others there if somebody wants to uh, play tic-tac-toe a little bit. Uh, we do have a couple new council members who will be coming on after a while, and uh, we will encourage them to uh, pick an empty slot. So with that, uh, do I, how do you want to do this? Read, them, read who they are uh, as, as we have them? Yes, I would uh, suggest that, Mayor. Currently, uh, on Green County Family and Children First, uh, we have uh, Councilman Curran without a secondary. Uh, Green County Water and Advisory Task Force, we have Councilman Bales without a secondary. Greater Dayton Mayors and Managers, uh, I am the primary and the Vice Mayor is the secondary. Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission, Councilmember Garcia is the primary and Councilmember Bales is secondary. Uh, Upper Little Miami River, uh, there's nobody in either one of those slots. Ohio Mayor Alliance, Mayor's Alliance is, uh, 
I'm the primary and the vice mayor is secondary. Beaver Creek Youth Development Committee, uh, Vice Mayor Adams is the primary and uh, Council Member Garcia is the secondary. So do I have a motion to appoint, make those appointments? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to make appointments as I just read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. If you feel energetic, you can fill in a slot to any time you want. <clears throat> Council time. Uh, we'll start on my far right, if we don't mind. Uh, Council Member Bales. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you probably said it best at the beginning of the meeting, but I just want to reiterate our thoughts and prayers for the whole McGrath family. Um, not only will we, he be missed in this organization, but throughout the city and, and really throughout the region. Um, I, I don't think I can put into words how, mm -hmm. how much I um, have been shocked by, by the news and, and really pray for his family. Um, I'd love to, uh, at some point in time, talk about a way to honor him around City Hall or around the city or something like that. Um, moving on, uh, I'd like to remind people that tomorrow night, uh, former First Lady Hope Taft will be giving a talk at the Beaver Creek Historical Society's quarterly meeting at Peace Church, Peace Lutheran Church at 7 o'clock. And then... Um, also, like you said, Mayor, congratulations to the city for being uh, listed as the top 10 spot to live in Beaver Creek. It's fantastic news. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Council Member Rushing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'd just like to take a moment myself to um, remember uh, Jeff McGrath. I got to know uh, Mr. McGrath uh, personally uh, when I was appointed to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I think I was 18 years old at the time. I was a young, a young gun, if you will, and um, you know he had the ability to, you know, tell you when you know what you need to be um, heard, and had the ability to you know uh, mentor you and give you the guidance, even for a, a young pup like me when I was on the BZA. Um, his uh, work and dedication to the community um, will be unmatched. Something can be said for someone who's born and raised here, um, who worked through the ranks and continues to give back. So I do want to um, remember him and his family at this time. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Garcia. Thank you. Yes, well, um, I will continue with my honoring of Jeff McGrath. He was uh, really fun to work with, and it's a hard sight to see his chair covered with black cloth over there. But he, I remember working with him for on personal improvements on my home and we took out maps and we had graphs and we had charts and his whole desk was covered for something as small as a driveway extension but he really took his job seriously and he loved what he did and he will be very missed and i'll miss his energy and humor at these meetings too so just keeping his family in our thoughts um on another note though i would like to congratulate the girls cross country team again uh Absolutely. being in surrounded by such accomplished young ladies was very impressive tonight both academically and athletically uh, it's very great honor to have such young women in our city and i know we have such wonderful young people in our schools and in our community and we cannot be more grateful for all of their wonderful accomplishments i also want to address one quick issue is the expansion of the ed choice which happened in november and is still slightly changing every day. Um, I refused, received a few calls and questions on this and while I am more than happy to look into this information for you, I have to tell you my information will be secondhand. This is information that I get directly from the school board and we are still separate and distinct entities, city council and the school board. So I've spoken with Joanne Regano, who's the president of the school board. She is more than happy to take any of your phone calls at any time. Again, I am still happy to field any questions that you may have, but just know that the information I get may be outdated by the time I get to answer it. These things are changing on an hourly and daily basis from my understanding, uh, but the school board really is doing a great job keeping a handle on things and making sure everybody's well informed. So if you do have questions, uh, please feel free to direct them to us or to the school board directly. That's all for me. Thank you. Council Member Comments on a great person, in my opinion. Uh, Jeff McGrath has been mentioned here by all the other council members. I think one of the greatest skills that he had was really his people skills, his ability to be able to relate and work with people. Uh, at the same time, certainly knowing the limits 
uh, that uh, he has to face, it's a, and then people may have to face, but he had a way of talking to people, and uh, I'll really surely miss that. I didn't have the opportunity to know him as long as some of you did, but uh, on the planning commission, I had that great honor and uh, be sorely missed. And I would agree with uh, Councilman Bales tomorrow night, uh, the uh, Beaver Creek Historical Society will have Hope Taft speaking <coughs> over here, I think at 7 o'clock mm -hmm. at uh, Peace Lutheran Church. So I encourage people to stop by and hear her words. Thank you. All right. Vice Mayor Adams. I too want to echo what uh, my fellow council members have uh, said about Jeff. Uh, I didn't know him for very long, but he was he was a quite a guy. He he was he had time for everybody, and uh, a great family man, uh, great for our community. I mean, I had an opportunity in another uh, position Friday night to work uh, the parking lot at the uh, funeral home, and to see the number of people that came out to honor him was. It was impressive, uh, and they were from all walks of life, uh, not just Beaver Creek, everywhere. Jeff was uh, was well known throughout the whole community, and he'll be sadly missed. Uh, aside from that, a couple weeks ago I attended, uh, along with Mayor Stone and his wife, the uh, Patriots Pen and Community Awards program at the VFW. Uh, the top three finishers in both the uh, essays and the speeches were there. One young lady, the one that won the speech contest, was was amazing. I mean, it almost brought me to tears with her uh, uh, her speech. Uh, but it uh, it told me a lot about these young people. We also the the VFW also recognized one of our police officers as Officer of the Year. I want to congratulate Sergeant Scott Spangler for being named that uh, by the VFW. Uh, and then uh, I too want to congratulate the cross country team. They. Uh, Hearing what they've done is amazing. Uh, you know, I used to be an athlete in four or five lives ago, but uh, watching what these, these girls can do and then the, to see them uh, getting scholarships to, uh, to run and continue what they love to do, I think is really great. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Vice Mayor, the VFW Port Patriot pen was very impressive. The, it really makes you, uh, you know, we're talking about young people tonight, whether it be cross country or whether it be these patriots that are writing essays. It makes you feel good about tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of good uh, young people out there that are going to follow us and uh, and keep this country where it needs to be. But uh, I, I, I met Jeff, well, I was on council when Jeff was hired. And uh, so I've, I've known him his, his entire employment. This is the only job he's ever had, I believe. Uh, so we were we worked together very well professionally. We we were friends. I've had him up on my boat, and we've had the good stories. I could tell some stories that uh, <laughs> would make us all laugh, and that sometimes that's what we need to do is really laugh a little bit once in a while. But but it's a sad time for the family, and uh, and I I seriously say when I said earlier on that uh, uh, Ohio, Beaver Creek being named the tenth best city in the state of Ohio to to live and raise a family. That's out of 186 cities that were evaluated in the state. And it takes people like Jeff, and Jeff didn't do everything by himself, but it takes people like Jeff that makes that happen. And so I'm going to miss him, and uh, I can't talk anymore, so I'm going to be quiet. So we will move on to the city manager's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just echo <coughs> Everything uh, council has said, uh, Jeff was, uh, you know, one of my direct reports the last uh, three years. Got to know him uh, very well. Uh, yeah, I could have a few stories myself, uh, but uh, you know, uh, it, it really uh, the the way that the uh, viewing uh, Friday night uh, spoke volumes of the people that turned out. Uh, one of the family members uh, told me uh, when I got to talking to them that a lady who stood and waited over two hours was just a resident that Jeff helped one time with a zoning issue and she felt obligated to come pay her respects and that speaks volumes uh, for Jeff and uh, you know Jeff is one that will never be forgotten and the evidence of what he's helped uh, this city become uh, we'll be here for many years, so uh, 
I would just continue to lift up uh, his family in prayer. It's, you know, things we, we, we here will know we can't just move on so easily, but a lot of people will just move on with their lives uh, that weren't directly connected necessarily. But I just encourage people to still lift up the McGraths when you think of them. Um, and I did want to especially thank uh, on that, speaking of that, and I know uh, uh, Vice Mayor spoke of it, but the COPP helped out at the uh, Tobias Funeral Home and directing. Thank you for their time and uh, efforts in putting that in. That really helped out. And I did want to mention uh, Teresa and J.R. Geraci, uh, who are the owner of the Pizza Dive and the new, what's that center? What's that called? Man Mangan. Make Mangan. Mangan. Uh, center. They allowed uh, uh, people to park there, to the overflow. That really did help out because <laughs> every space was taken. So uh, a special uh, holler out to them and uh, a very big thanks. Uh, just moving forward, um, just a couple of construction updates. Uh, things are going, things are happening. It's January, but you know we have to prepare for when the weather breaks here, which we've had a light winter, but uh, uh, I should knock on wood. Here, here will be a blizzard next week for me saying that. Uh, but Kemp Road uh, Signals Project, uh, that's currently being advertised for bids. Uh, that's going to be opening February 12th for the bids. Lock Drive Culvert replacement. The bids were held uh, open back in December 11th, and the city's working on awarding the construction contract with Sturm Construction and Colonel Glen Highway Enhancements. This project's currently being advertised for bids and that's going to be scheduled for February 5th. So we got things coming up. we got even more coming up uh, in projects as we move on to the uh, weather, uh, the construction season. I just wanted, again, to thank the retirements that we had. John Walcha of engineering, uh, he put in, uh, just uh, recently is retiring. He had 27 years with the city. He stressed, well, I have 30 years in public service, but 20, 27 with the city. We, we'll miss John. Uh, Jim Stoll with the police department, uh, he, he put in uh, many years there, what was that, 22 years, 21, 22 years, uh, so congratulations to Jim. And Chris Bukite, uh, everybody here will thank her because without her you wouldn't get her paycheck. So uh, Chris is in our finance, uh, our payroll, so uh, she's uh, going to have about 20, 21, 22 years in. So we wish them all ha happy, uh, happy retirements and enjoy life, uh, enjoy uh, everything, and don't sit down, but get out and do what you always wanted to do for sure. And uh, upcoming senior center uh, events, just a, a quick, because these come up real quick if we don't mention them Valentine's Day, February 14th, 1230, live music, dancing, and appetizers. Uh, sponsored by Trinity Community of Beaver Creek. I tell you what, the seniors know how to have fun. They dress up, they, you know, they, they, they make me feel old because they're acting younger than I do when I go in there. So they, they're, they're really, uh, they have a good time. Uh, Day of Caring Pancake Breakfast. Proceeds go to the Day of Caring 365. That's Sunday, uh, February 23rd. So that's a little fundraiser, $6 adult, $4 for senior cash payments, tickets at the door, and we'll be accepting personal hygiene items for donations. So just keep the Senior Center uh, in your uh, mind when you're thinking of doing some things. Uh, last thing I wanted to say is about shipping and hauling uh, has started. Uh, the vegetative debris at the two sites, CMEX Reserve and the Environmental Services, specifically CMEX is where it has started. Uh, it's expected materials at CMEX will be ground before the end of February and processing, then they'll move to environmental services, and that'll be scheduled in late February and continue into March. Just want to remind residents that the Greene County Environmental Services does have uh, the capacity for or organic materials that's been generated by tornado. Uh, it's January now, but when you're doing it in February or March, as it gets warmer and you still have more brush to clean up, uh, you know, anything the size of a uh, firewood size, maximum size brush, four inches in diameter and eight feet long, that can be taken uh, there, four inch in diameter, 14 inch to 18 inches long. Uh, the key there is for, you know, the tornado impacted people, there is no charge. Uh, please contact the Environmental Services. Uh, they're at the 2145 uh, Greenway Boulevard and it's in Xenia and there's a phone number there is 562-5925. Um, please contact them for more uh, information. Uh, as I know, springtime will bring more cleaning, even for those not impacted by a tornado. You know, it seems like in spring you're uh, 
you should have probably done it in fall, but even in spring, sometimes you realize some overgrowth is happening uh, or limbs that are down because of all the wind we've uh, received. I uh, just want to share with you just real quick, this, these are a couple pictures. This is the shredder and the uh, little uh, crane kind of thing uh, that's lifting up the debris and putting it into the shredder. And that, here's a better shot. So that backhoe right, okay, right there, then puts, and it twists, it can spin around, then it loads it in here, and then of course you can see where it shoots it into the truck. Now, back on me here, this is the size of material. So people said, well, isn't that mulch and free mulch to everybody? This is not mulch. Uh, mulch is uh, uh, ground about two or three or four more times before it gets to that. And then it's treated and everything else, but big chunks of wood. And of course, that's just to get it into the back of the truck so that it can go to uh, on the processing. There's the back of a, a semi truck. Um, our staff, the engineering staff, and the township staff, uh, we have to measure each truck that's being used, label them, modify, you know, so we know it's truck number one, truck number two, truck number three. We literally measure the inside of them so we are sure on accuracy. And as they come through, we also have to take a picture of each truck and the load volume. All that to meet our FEMA requirements so that we get the maximum amount of reimbursement. Uh, we do not want to lose a dime. <laughs> so we are having that any time uh, um, they are there, which will be Monday or uh, Monday through Saturday. Uh, I think it's what, 8 to 8, something like that. The max will be 8 to 8. Uh, they're working, I think, up until uh, almost they won't work in the dark at this point in time. Uh, but it may get later um, as the days get uh, longer, brighter. So uh, just that's what's going on. It's at CMEX right now. The noise isn't too bad. We've, uh, you know, we thought it was going to be a little louder, but they could be starting up a second machine too, so it could get a little louder. Uh, we have been in good communications with the city of Fairborn, uh, notifying them, and they're the ones that helped us set the uh, working hours to start with. So all's going well there. Just wanted to pass on that uh, information. Um, and I believe that's all I have tonight. All right, thank you. All right, at this point in time on the agenda, it is citizen comments. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to address council on any issue at all? No one? In that case, uh, I would like to ask for a motion for executive session. Mr. Mayor, I move to enter into executive session pursuant to section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code for the purpose of consideration of the appointment of a public official. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to enter into executive session. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Curran? Yes. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Rushing? Yes. Vice Mayor Adams? Yes. Council Member Bales? Yes. Mayor Stone? Yes. And when we, we will come back here, there will be a decision uh, made after we return. So if you wish to stay around, please do. Uh, but at this point, we're excused into executive session. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the air. I need a motion to exit executive session, please. Second. Uh, I have a motion and a second to exit executive session. Roll call, please. Councilmember Garcia? Yes. Councilmember Rushing? Yes. Vice Mayor Adams? Yes. Councilmember Bales? Yes. Councilmember Curran? Yes. Mayor Stone? Yes. Do I have a motion to reconvene the regular scheduled meeting? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to reconvene this regular scheduled meeting of the City Council. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have a. Uh, a, uh, an announcement that we'd like to make or a motion that we'd like to make. Mr. Mayor, I move to select the following applicants to interview for the council Microphone. vacancies. Microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get there. Mr. Mayor, I make a move to select the following applicants to, for interviews for the council vacancies. Glenn Dewar, Carol Graff, Paul Newman Sr., Tiffany Novak, and Tiffany Schwartz. Do I hear a second? Second. 
I have a motion and a second to uh, uh, to proceed with interviews on five selected candidates. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.